Hey everyone, today we're going through the next three boxes of S600 parts. The last video I put up on this was not very popular, but I had fun making it, so I'm gonna make another one. You can just deal with it. <laughs> Here we go. It's exciting. Next box. Alrighty. First thing, rearview mirror. It's so little, little tiny one. That's like the bottom of the dash. These switches do not look factory, neither does that red light, so... I don't think that's something I'll be able to patch up, especially because it's got this like fake leather pattern on it. But I might find some different style switches or something else to put there. I might put fog lights or something on the car in the future maybe. And the ashtray which is super rusty, but it is there. At least the outside's plastic, so the outside's not rusty. Here's like another piece of the dash. That's cool, got the old like switches and labels and stuff on it. This one here that says dimmer, I don't think it's original. Like the, the, the latch is a different style, the little knob on it. And obviously it's different on the back, someone's replaced that. And it's kind of bent up the panel here, which is a bit annoying, but that's something we'll probably fix. And then the choke has the choke cable attached to it, so mark that down. Um, we'll have a look at this box after a bit closer. I've got another radiator fan, but it's got one of the blades snapped off it, so that's kind of useless, but I'll mark it down anyway. I've got an indicator lens, another indicator lens. So I can see another, another indicator lens. These all look... Kind of crappy compared to those other ones I have, but we'll mark them down. I'm guessing these are original ones, those other ones I have are reproductions, I think. Um, this is either, it's like a cable, so it's either a choke cable or a throttle cable, I guess. I'll just mark it down as sliding cable, because I'm not sure. I guess the ones connected to the choke is the choke cable, and this is probably throttle cable, but it could also be maybe the bonnet release, or the boot release, or the, yeah, I don't know. Sliding cable. This is like a like a little spinning cable, so it's either the taco or the speedo. It's pretty bent and rusty and it's all split, so this is going to be interesting to try and fix up. But it does move, so that's a good start. I'll mark that down as rotating cable, I guess, because I don't know whether it's speedo or taco. Um, it's obviously a... Oh, I guess it could be a clutch line or a brake line. I'm just going to say it's brake line. This is obviously the fuel level float, like it floats up and down in the tank and says how much fuel's in there, so we'll... Um, this is an original oil filter. So the S600 takes like a, a filter insert instead of like a modern filter. I think some BMWs and stuff use filter inserts as well, like they're from the 60s apparently. But yeah, so the filter is like a little paper thing and then you reuse the outside piece. So mark that down as filter housing. Won't even bother marking that there's a filter in there because I plan to put an oil filter in it. Um, that's a thermostat housing. It's got a thermostat in it still. It's funny, this is less corroded than some of my Prelude ones, despite the fact that this one's like 60 years old. <laughs> What's this? A relay? Wow, that is very 1960s looking inside there. I think it's a relay, I'm not actually sure. Unless it's an indicator flasher. I might just... Uh, it's had like a sticker on it, but the sticker is not readable anymore. If anyone knows what this one is, let me know. I might mark it down as... It's got a... I think it's an indicator flasher. This coil here will be like the resistance to help, like part of what it does to time the flashing. So I'm going to call it indicator flasher, but I'm not sure if that's right. Uh, is that a oil... That's definitely oil pickup. Oh, yeah, it's the pump and the pickup in one piece. We'll take it out of bag. Yeah, so that looks like it's the oil pump and the pickup in one assembly. So we'll mark that down as oil pump slash pickup. And what I will note, actually, while I'm writing that down, is engine oil pump. Because the S600 has an oil pump for the gearbox as well. What's that? That is a... Ah, okay. So remember how I was saying these rollers fall apart? You can see this one here teeth are all broken and missing off it and you have to grind this rivet off so someone's obviously already started doing that on this one and this is very rusty and I have a bunch of them but I'll mark it down anyway that's the roller for the cam chain or like timing chain tensioner and then a ruined timing chain tensioner roller this whole box smells like old stuff like like old shed smell like a mix of like old petrol and old oil I have no idea what that is. I'm guessing it's like alternator bracket or a uh, starter motor. Wait, this engine only has an alternator. Oh, yeah, that's gonna say power steering. No, it doesn't have power steering. Air conditioning. No, it doesn't have air. I'm pretty sure it's alternator bracket. Well, I think it's actually a generator on this car. It's not even an alternator. It puts out DC instead of AC. I mean, the same box as that. There's also this, which is another eccentric suspension adjusty thing. So. What I should probably do is put this in the box that had the other one, but now that I've got it all written down which box it's in, I think I'll just leave everything in the boxes it's already in, and then if I need bits, I'll know where to get them, because it's not like I'm going to be getting them in and out all the time. And then the other thing in this bag that had that in there is this thing, which I feel like I recognise. Obviously, it's got oil or something in it, but I'm not sure what it's off. I think this is the dipstick tube. I think it's a dipstick tube. It kind of looks like the one off the gearbox, but it's longer. I'm going to call it a dipstick tube. Once again, if you're watching this and you're like, that's not that, it's this, please let me know. 
because half the reason of doing this is so I can actually work out what I've got and what it is. Another brake line. So this is another, wow. Anyway, okay, this is pretty. So this is one of the tensioners out of the rear chain case. Same deal as the time belt one, the rubber all falls off these and they go brittle and old and fall apart. The difference is this one, someone's ground it out and I can't get this pin out. But if you can see down inside there, someone's center punched the pin to try and rivet it back in. So that's interesting. This was a super worn as well, but I'll mark that down as rear chain case tensioner. But there's more of this. I'll have a lot of I have a lot of these at this point. <laughs> I've found heaps of them. Probably should have done this earlier, but I just went to manual exposure. So hopefully you can see in the box a bit better. There is this. Oh wait, is this a fuel pump? I think it is. I thought I was missing a fuel pump. It says FP3. I guess FP stands for fuel pump. But I think this is supposed to have a, it's supposed to have like a clear bowl over the bottom of it. But I thought the clear bowl thing was a filter. But this is like, it's too heavy to just be a filter. And it's got like stuff in it. So maybe it is a fuel pump. I'd have to look into that because, yeah, I needed a fuel pump. And I didn't think I had one. But maybe I do. Maybe I just need the glass piece off the bottom. The only thing is, if it was a fuel pump, I would expect it to have a big plug on it. But it's just got this little pin on the top. It doesn't have a big plug. It is the right brand though. Oh, that'd be cool if it's a fuel pump and it works. It's got some pretty freaking big dents in it, but I'll mark it down as fuel pump and hope that that's what it actually is. That's a seal. Whoops. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is the seal off the base of the windscreen. <clears throat> Apparently these are super hard to get and I do have a good one, but then I also found them online as a reproduction. So maybe they're not that hard to get, but I don't think I'll even write this down because if you try and put it flat again, it, it just snaps in half. Brake line. I will replace the brake lines because 60 year old rubber brake lines are probably not the best, but I'm marking them down anyway. That is a gear out of one of the rear chain cases as well. So it seems like there's a few chain case parts in this box. I'll call it chain case big sprocket because there's a big one and a little one in there. Uh, okay, so this is obviously a tensioner again, like it's a rubber tensioner, but it's got like an O-ring and a slot and stuff in it. I was gonna say, there should be a hole in there. So this obviously oil gets pumped in here and then comes out there to lubricate this bearing. It's not out of the chain case. It's obviously off the timing chain for like the cams somewhere. So I'll just call it timing chain tensioner, I guess, because I don't actually know where this one goes. I haven't seen inside that bit of the engine yet. Oh, and then there's another one. So, I don't know how many the engine has in it, but I'll call it lubricated timing chain wheel, so I sort of have a bit of a description. There you go. There's one of those. This one actually has all its teeth on it, but I'm guessing it's going to be brittle as anyway. But you can see this one, the rivet is still on there. Someone hasn't ground it off. That's what they look like when they're new. Or new. This thing, that is a, oh, that's like the big, it's like a big contactor, like a relay, but a big chunky one for the starter motor. Made in Japan, does it have a date on it? Don't think it has a date on it. It's pretty old school. Someone's had a gulp fixing it before because the screws are all stripped out. Ta-da! That is the thing that holds the gear stick down in the top of the gearbox. Uh, gear stick retention plate. That's uh, that's a bag with two screws in it. I'm not gonna label that, I have no idea what they're for. Another one of these things. I decided earlier this thing was called dipstick tube, so I'm gonna go with that. Let's say another brake line, another brake line, another brake line. Most of a brake line. See, that's uh, that's why I don't want to run the original brake lines because they're already snapping in half just being in a box. There you go. There's another timing belt tensioner and another time chain tensioner. With all the parts I bought for this car, it's supposed to be one assembled engine and one disassembled engine. But I have way more than two engines worth. Like, I'm pretty sure there's only one of these in each engine, and I think I have about six of them at this point. <laughs> there's this thing. Uh, this obviously goes in the time chain tensioner, and it's either part of the centrifugal oil filter, or it's part of the sprag clutch for the starter motor. I think it's the starter motor gear, so I'll mark it as starter motor gear, but that's like a, it's an apprehensive mark. This one's got a drive on it. But it looks like the drive is rubber isolated, so I'm trying to think what you would want to drive that you want to have vibration dampening on. And this is also part of it. I'm guessing this one drives off that one, because these are drive thingies on here and they're rubber isolated as well. This tooth size definitely looks like the timing chain, but I'm not sure what the timing chain setup looks like. So I will just mark it as timing chain sprockets, but I'm not sure what they're for or where they go. But I'm sure that will become evident once I actually start putting the engine together. Or rebuilding the one that is together. I labelled them as steel sprockets so don't get them confused with all the little crappy rubber ones. This looks like the, this is the steering lock so that's cool. Yeah this car has like, the ignition is on the dash and then the steering lock is a separate key. So you know how your car you get in, you undo the steering lock and start the car with the same keyhole? This one the steering lock is like a separate thing you have to put on and off and if you're like parking it, I don't know, in your garage I guess you wouldn't bother turning the steering lock on, you just start the car over here and you don't even put the key in the, in, you don't even put the key in the column, so that's what that is. In saying that, 
Maybe I'm full of crap because it has pins on the back like it does something electric as well. Maybe it won't let you start it. Oh, it probably doesn't let you start it with the lock engaged because I'm pretty sure that the, the ignition in the dash is in a different spot. So yeah, I'm guessing that's to stop you starting the car and driving away with your steering locked. I bet you someone will comment on the video and be like, that steering lock's not even from an S600, it's from some other car. Hard line. Um, that's a timing chain, I'm not going to touch it because it's very oily. I'm guessing it's a second hand one anyway, so I'll be putting new ones in it, or new one. I think it's got two. And I thought I saw a second... Yeah, okay, so I'm pretty sure there's one chain that goes to the starter motor and one that does the timing. So this one looks smaller, I'm guessing this is the starter chain. And then this one here, which looks like it's a lot longer, is the timing chain. Yeah. There's this big bag that I've been delaying opening. I have... Oh, there you go. So remember how I was talking about, when we looked at the starter motor in the last video, it had that planetary gear in it. So this is the front half of the planetary gear set up for the starter motor. And you can see this is the sprocket that that chain drives on. So this is actually in the timing case sealed part of the engine. And rather than starting off the flywheel like a toothed flywheel like every other car, it actually starts through a chain onto the front of the crank. And yeah, it drives through this star like planetary setup to get the reduction. Because normally your car's got a big flywheel this size, a little tiny starter gear to get the gear reduction. This doesn't have that, and if and if it did, the flywheel on this car is like this big, so it wouldn't work. So they're using a planetary reduction to get the starter leverage. But this will be a nice part to clean up. It looks nice and dirty. It'll have some nice bearings and stuff in it, so that's one. That might be on the bench sooner than expected, but we'll write it down. Starter, planetary set for now. What else is in here? This. So, this is one of the cooler parts of this engine, and I'm surprised more modern cars don't run this. This is an oil filter. So you've all seen, where did it go? Uh, there's this one that we found before that just has the paper element. Basically, the oil gets pushed through the filter and whatever gets stuck in the filter, like that is too big to fit through the filter, gets stuck in there. What this one does is the oil is pumped in through, in through here, I'm not sure where it comes back out, but in through there, through this hole, into this section, which is being spun by the timing chain when the engine is running. So the way this works is it actually centrifugally flings all the heavy bits of oil out to the inside of this and holds it in there and only lets the clean oil through. So every now and again you can see these screws have had a hard life because for like a service you unscrew this and you scrape all the gunk out of it. This is a centrifugal oil filter and I'm not sure, I think it's, uh, I'm not sure if it's after or before the paper one but it's a pretty cool setup. It uses no filter medium and it just relies on centrifugal force to throw all the heavy particles to the outside of the filter and hold them there. So that's a cool little thing. I knew I'd come across this in one of these boxes and I was keen to see it. But we'll mark it down. Centrifugal oil filter. What else is in here? I'm pretty sure... Wow, these are bent. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that's bent. So these are either head studs or main studs. I don't think I'll bother marking these down because they're bent and I, that's something I'll be reusing anyway. And there's this, which is another timing belt tensioner, a uh, timing chain tensioner. Remember if we were looking in the other video of the first boxes, I already found like two or three of these, and then this is another one, so... I don't know why there's... Like I said, for some reason, I should have two engines worth of parts, but then there's some bits like this where I have way too many. Everything else in this bag is just the rest of the head studs. Um, the rest of the stuff in this bag, they're just little nuts. Another bag of screws. Another one of these dampened gears, so I'll mark that down as three, but I'm not actually sure what their job is or where they go. So we have the handbrake, which is kind of rusty and uh, oh, it doesn't even move, <laughs> it's very rusty. So the cool thing is most of the chrome pieces on the outside of this car, like the headlights and the grill and stuff are stainless, so you can polish them. This definitely looks like normal steel that's been chrome plated, so this will need to be re-chrome plated. But before chrome plating it, it probably needs to be unrusted, but we'll mark down handbrake. Oh, I've got no idea what that is. Oh wait. Does it go on there? I think it does. I think this is part of the handbrake mechanism. I'm just going to call this handle handbrake mechanism because I, I think it, it looks like it fits on this spline and I'm guessing it goes under the car and probably connects to like the cable that goes to the back and pulls it. We'll just call it handbrake mechanism handle end or something. Um, that's part of a diff bush. Half a diff bush. Oh, there you go. Oh, you, hey! So there's a diff mount. If you remember in the other video, I found another one of these in the other box, but these were snapped off, and this one is not snapped off, so that means I don't have to fix the other one. <coughs> I have these. Those two weird things I found in the last video that looked like handbrakes. Someone commented and said they were the front bumper mounts, which I think is what I thought, which is like what I thought they were. I'm guessing these are the rear 
bumper brackets, I think. That's what they look like they should be for. So I'll mark them down as rear bumper brackets, but if I'm wrong, please correct me in the comments. This is a, this is like the expansion overflow bottle for the radiator. And apparently these are really hard to find in like uncracked condition. And this one, oh, is that a crack? No, it's not a crack. This one is uncracked. It's been painted for some reason, but it's uncracked. So I'll mark that down as washer fluid bottle, I guess. Uh, over wait, actually is it windscreen washer or overflow? I think it's the windscreen washer bottle. I go open. Hey, there we go. So, this is why I'm doing this. This is the thing that goes above the number plate with like the number plate lights in it. I saw one of these come up on Facebook the other day and I was like, oh, do I need that? Should I buy it? But now I've seen this one and I don't need it, so I don't need to buy that one. I don't know why there's a spring in it. Oh, never mind, that just came out. I'll mark that down, uh, number plate light. And then the rest of this box, I have whatever that is. Is this the boot latch? It's in the tray with, it's in like the box with the um, the number plate lights. I'm guessing it's the boot latch. I don't think it's the bonnet one. The bonnet one's like got an old style circle one. I think this is the boot latch. But now that I've like clicked it, I don't know how to unclick it. And then the rest of the stuff in this box, these just look like the globe holders that go with the number plate. Oh, and they've got the lock. Haha. <laughs> so the rest of the things in there, two globe holders. There's the lid. Oh, wow. Well. <laughs> So every other car I've ever owned, these are the two little glass bits that go on the number plate light. Every car I've ever owned, they've been plastic. These ones are glass, that's pretty cool. So I guess you only get that on cars from the 60s. It even says made in Japan on it. Rad, so lenses, globe holders, and the boot lock. And with that, that is the end of this box, ready to pull out box number five. I realized I forgot to open this box. Turns out all that's in it is a bunch of bolts and the shims to adjust the alignments. That wasn't very interesting. Normally the boxes have like little cool interior pieces in them, but not this time. Just mark it down as box of suspension shims. Here we go. What is inside box number five? Number five? Yeah, number five. Ja. Whoa, straight up. Something in a Honda box. It says, oh, brake pads, that's not interesting. Uh, I was like, cool, I can Google the number and work out what it was, box. Nah, brake pads, S2000. So the guy I bought this off has an S2000, which I'm guessing is where the box came from. Those are not S2000 parts though. Aha, so that's an interior door handle. The S600 has like little flippy ones that you push down with your finger. So there's one interior door handle. Uh, that's a window winder, one window winder. Got the other door handle. These are like nice and shiny still, which is cool. Uh, the other window winder. I'll mark those down. Oh, this is something I was just thinking about before when we were looking at that reservoir. These are the little things that the windscreen wipers stick out of on the bonnet, and then this little thing on the side is like the little squirty thing that squirts the water on the windscreen. You can see you can put a screwdriver in the end of it and turn it to aim the water jet up and down. So I was wondering if I had these when I saw that washer bottle, and it looks like I do, so windscreen squirter nozzles times two. So far this video is a lot more interesting than the last one. These boxes have way cooler stuff in them. But, oh, actually no, these are, yeah, these are the piece of trim that goes around the base of the window winder. So, window winder trim, times two. Uh, oh, that is, this is the door striker. So, I don't think, I'm sure, we, we might come across a door, like, a normal car door latch has a little hook when you close it, it latches. The S600 has this really weird thing. These are like rack teeth and there's actually like a gear on the door when you close it the gear like engages into these teeth and rolls in and holds the door closed and then this like pops it open or pushes it back or something it's a little spring but yeah it has like a rack and pinion set up for the door latch it's really weird but it's cool but that's what that is it's a door striker um these are obviously like the interior i think they're like it's a door handle but i already called the other thing and there's a little chrome ends for it like I already called these the door handles, so I guess I'll call these, I'll call these door grab, grab handle. And it looks like I have two of them and I have four pieces of trim. So that little box had some cool stuff in it. I'm pretty sure, <laughs> so this is why we don't use original brake lines. I'm pretty sure this is the clutch line. I'm gonna take a guess and call this one the clutch line. Um, we'll put this box aside and dig into this box in a minute. That is the water pump. Ah. Oh. This little flat tang on here, that would match up with in the back of one of those absorbed, like shock absorbed gears from before. So I'm guessing one of those gears dries off the timing chain, that's what drives the water pump. And that's what they've got this tang for to take up any misalignment. So I'll mark that down as water pump, but I think one of those gears we found in the other box must be a water pump drive gear. Uh, that's a spacer. 
It's cast iron. I would have said it was like a carb spacer or a... Why is it steel or iron? It's really heavy. I do not recognize this pattern. It's obviously off the engine. It's obviously a spacer for something. Water jacket spacer? It doesn't match up to the water pump. I'm just going to call that... Uh steel spacer I guess that's a weird part if anyone knows what that spacer is let me know so here is another spinning cable this one on the other hand this one is less crap on the outside but it is seized whereas the other one actually turned this has different ends on it so this is obviously like I said the other one is either the speedo or the taco and this one is either the speedo or the taco it's the other one to what the other one is so I just marked down speedo slash taco rotating cable whatever it was again that one will be interested to get unseized because they're not very um, they're not very robust on the inside so trying to unseize it will be interesting this is a sump that someone has apparently already painted it's cool that it's got like factory sump baffles in it and some nuts, I don't know what the nuts are for. We'll just write it down as something. Uh, that is another brake shoe adjuster. This is another thing that I should only have like one car's worth and I have about 20 of these. So that one can just go in the pile. Oh, a seat belt. So, I know the guy I got it off had some mini moke stuff, which is why we found some mini moke parts in the other video. I don't know if this is an S600 one or a mini moke one, but I only have one by the look of it and it doesn't like have a, a name or a maker's mark sort of thing or any branding on it. It looks like it might have had a sticker here at some point but the sticker has since been replaced by rust so I'll label it down as female seatbelt because it's the female side and um, obviously that doesn't go in there, that's the bolt mount but we'll mark it down as female seatbelt but I don't actually know if it's off the 600 or not. That's the other part of that window seal which I'm not even going to bother marking down because it's stuffed. That is the apparently knoll. This is knoll. Anyway, this is the lid off the carbies, like for the air filter. It's the air filter lid and it's named Noel. Hey, more of these things. Remember how we had like 20 of these and now I found another one. So I guess I'll just add that to the tally. That is another handbrake shoe mechanism. And there's another shoe adjusting like tension thing. But this one actually looks much less corroded in nicer condition than the other ones. And then the last thing, ugh, this is the generator. So a modern car has an alternator and it's called an alternator because it puts out alternating current. I'm pretty sure this is a generator, so it puts out DC current, so it'll just put straight, oh it won't be 12 volts, it'll have to be regulated down to 12 volts. But it'll just put out a straight current, and it's got another, oh well, wow, it's, oh well, it's not happy, that's not good. <laughs> so this will be interesting to fix up, this is definitely going to be one that might be getting fixed up sooner rather than later, because this should be fun. It's got a cooling fan on the front for itself, and then obviously a V-band, like a V-belt to drive it. It's got a cool little like grated cover on the back of it. You can see it's a lot simpler than an alternator. But yeah, this will be getting fixed up soon because it's obviously got a seized bearing or a ruined winding or something in it. And we've got another aluminium radiator fan. So I'll mark this down as generator and I'll write down the fan separately. And then the last of the stuff in this box, hard line. I'll just write down hard line and I don't think I need to write down that half of the gasket. We still have this box that was in this box, boxception box. So there's another thermostat housing, which is the amount of corroded I would expect from a car that's 60 years old, so I'll mark that down. And this, these two boxes have been so much more interesting than the two in the last video. So, I was right. This is the ignition switch. Remember I said that the steering lock... Oh, there you go. There's another steering lock one. So there's the two of them next to each other. You're on your car. With this car, yeah, you've got a start and you've got a lock, and they're separate things. So I'll mark down another steering lock and an ignition switch. Uh, that is the... This sticks out the top of the rocket cover, and I'm pretty sure it's the taco drive. So, if I was organised, this is the mystery rotating cable that was in this box. If one end of this matches this, we should be able to work out whether this is the taco or the speedo. Neither end of this wants to fit into that. Oh, wait, that does. Is there like a nut that slides up and down this? There's not. So I would have thought that would... Okay, I'm going to leave these as inconclusive still as to which one is which, but we'll put that down as... Uh, taco rocker cover drive. Outside door handle, so like the, the lock and stuff on it. And there's another outside door handle. Oh, this one, I guess this is the passenger one because it doesn't have a lock in it. Um, another handbrake. Hey, this one's not completely rusted solid like the other one was. Another piece of rubber that's completely munted. I won't bother marking that down. Oh, wow, what is that? I, there's two of them. Are they mirror images of each other? They are. I have no idea what this is. I'm guessing it might go 
inside a piece of rubber trim as like part of a mount for it, but I have no idea what that piece is. If anyone can help me know what this is, please do. Uh, some metal polish, definitely gonna need that, but it's not part of the car. I might actually, uh, actually I might not put this back in the box. I might put this in my toolbox. I won't mark it down. Uh, is this off Nest 600? So obviously that's like a, like a thing for an antenna to stick out of. But there's no antenna on the S600 because unless you have like a, a special like higher spec one, they don't even have a radio or a heater. So I'm pretty sure mine shouldn't have a radio and I do not know what would be sticking out of this something. Uh, I'm going to call it, I will label it as antenna outlet, even though it's not. But I'll, when I read antenna outlet, I'll know what it is. So if I see where this thing should go, I'll know which box it's in. We have a little rubber thing. Oh, I know what that is. So the rear view mirror when we saw it before, it's got a clamp. And so on the S600, instead of the rearview mirror sticking to the window, uh, sticking to the windscreen or to the roof, there's a piece of like wire rod up the middle of the windscreen. I'll try to find a picture and you can like slide the mirror up and down it. This goes on that rod and then touches like the windscreen or something to stop it vibrating. So I'm pretty sure that's what that is. It's this little rubber triangle. I'm gonna call it rear view mount dampener. What else is in here? Another one of those things. What are these? Wait, unless that's the same one. No, it's a different one. If anyone knows what these are from, please let me know. Um, brake line. Another cable. This one's got like a thing on it, so I'm guessing this is... Oh, it could be anything. Oh, I reckon this is the bonnet release, because that is how close the dash is to the bonnet latch. So, I'm going to go out on a, on a limb here and call this bonnet release cable, but I might also be wrong. Did we have a bonnet release in one of the other boxes? I don't remember. I'll have to read back through the spreadsheet. I also have this oh no is this the rod that holds the mirror it might be i'm just going to call it steel it's got a little square on the end and then it's like it's bent and retarded looking so i might just call it square rod i called it mirror rod there's a bag of whatever this is i'll just call it drugs i have a cool original honda key wait if i show you what the key looks like you can copy it there you go what it's got an old Honda, like old school Honda logo on it. I bet you, out of all the boot lock, fuel lock, bonnet lock, door lock I have, I bet you they're all different keys because they're like from heaps of random cars and this key isn't going to do anything. It definitely doesn't open this one. That's not a good start. <laughs> this is going to be interesting to work out, but that is later me's problem. And the last thing I have, boom! You think the fuse box in your car is complicated, well, this is one of the S600. The whole car, four fuses, and I'm pretty sure two of them are, I oh know they're all joined together. I'm pretty sure one of these isn't even used because it's for like a radio that I don't have. So yeah, there's my super complicated fuse box and two springs, which I have no idea what they're from. But with that, that is the end on oh, this threaded thing, which you also don't know what it is. That is the end of this box. So we'll pack it back up, and then we're ready for the third, oh, sixth and final box. I've labeled this in my spreadsheet as fuse box, but I feel like fuse block is more appropriate. <laughs> I don't think it's quite worthy of being called a fuse box. This is the last box. This one's friggin' heavy, so I'm guessing it's gonna be mainly driveline stuff. All right, straight off the top, that is a, oh, it's got like felt in it. That's a guide for like the window to slide up and down. I'm gonna call it window slider. Window channel, window guide. That is also a window guide. And then these are also window guides. I might label them as short window guide and long window guide. Wow, this one, the uh, the mount is pretty munted on that one. It's been like snapped off and twisted. That is, well, I'm just gonna call it timing cover, I guess. Pretty sure it's off the front of the engine, or at least that's a safe guess is where it came from. Timing cover. These are the headers. So one of the cool things about the S600 is it has like a factory equal length, like crazy exhaust manifold. And then the actual second half of the headers, the bolt to this are like long, they're super long. It's got all these crazy like tubes and stuff under the car. It's got a really cool factory exhaust. This has been, so this white stuff is flux. And you can see this is like, the repairs are like a gold color. This has been repaired a long time ago because this is all brazed. So I don't think anyone would be brazing this now because welders are so cheap and easy to get. But you can see, it's, uh, it's a bit rusty, so that's why this has been brazed, and you can see it's got weird bits of stuff on it. So, I uh, don't know if I'll be fixing this. It is maybe fixable. If I can't find another one, I'll have to fix it, but it's at least good enough that I can use to make a copy of it. So, we'll mark that down as exhaust manifold. Next thing in here, oh, here we go. So, this is the door latch. You remember we had the door striker in the other box? This is the little gear that joins up to those teeth. So, it turns one way and not the other. So as you close the door, it goes click, 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 click in and then holds the door tight. And then once I push one of the, or whichever, one of these levers, 
releases it, it'll let it turn. Oh, there you go. If I hold this one, it turns back the other way. So that's how, that's what would be pulled to open the door. So it's a pretty crazy door release mechanism, but yeah, it's really cool. Ooh. Oh, I, uh, I reckon that's probably part of the windscreen wiper mechanism, maybe? I'm going to say windscreen wiper pivot. Pretty sure that's what it is. Uh, there's a box here. The box has... Oh, there you go. One brand new filter. I assume it's an S600 filter. It looks right, so... Mark that down as new oil filter. Oh, that's interesting. It says it fits a bunch of Hondas, but then it's also got like a Yamaha and stuff on there. So I reckon this is a common size motorbike filter. It's in this little box. Uh, I'll open that at the end. It's got bubble wrap on it. Uh, misc bolt. Won't even mark that one down. That is a drive flange. I'm guessing off the tail shaft. I think the only spline to drive like this in the car is the tail shaft. So we'll just say tail shaft drive flange. Um, that is an up control arm. That's like a series two up control arm. The earlier ones are two halves bolted together. I have both, and people normally convert to these because I think they think they're stronger, which they probably are, but I reckon they're ugly compared to the two-part ones. So I'm going to use the two-piece ones. Whether they're better or not, I'm not too worried, but I think the two-piece ones are cooler, so I won't be using this, but Series 2 upper control arm. Uh, this is the pedal box. So <laughs> it's got very small pedals, this car. But obviously you've got the accelerator, the brake, and the clutch. Do they actually move? Oh yeah, they're not like completely rusted. It's not completely rusted solid. They are... No, they move. So that'll be a fun one to fix up. That should be pretty easy, but there'll be a video in the future getting this fixed up, looking brand new again. But for now, we'll write it down as pedal box. Um, I've been guessing that is an, a really rusty engine mount. Uh, what's the next thing in here? So this is part of the carbs. The way that you get fuel to the carbs in the S600 is a bit different to normal. So the fuel comes in through this line, and you can I think it's the fuel, and you can see it goes through this little wavy like channel, and so that feeds the fuel into the carbs, and then this one here is water. So it's a bit of an odd setup. No, that one can't be fuel. Anyway, it, the, the fuel feeds in through this manifold block thing, which means that if you have like not a good gasket seal here, you get fuel going in the engine and going everywhere. So it's a pretty interesting setup rather than having little hoses, it uses a manifold to feed the fuel to the carbs, but that's what that is. We'll mark that down as fuel manifold, I guess. Uh, that is a like caster rod bracket. Oh, lower, I think this is actually lower control arm. Lower control arm. Oh, I've got no idea what that is. Is it part of the window? No, that's like, oh, I reckon it is the guts out of a handbrake. That's like the ratcheting part. I'm going to put that down as handbrake ratchet. Engine mount number two. That's another windscreen wiper mount. The other thing that makes me think they're windscreen wiper mounts is they're spring loaded to return to centre, like they don't go all the way around, so I'm pretty sure they're wiper mounts. The wiper's the only thing I can think of that doesn't do a full circle, like it's not a window crank or anything. Cool, and the last thing in this box is this, which is like... It's like a crank girdle, I guess. The S600 engine kind of splits in half in a weird way. So this on the bottom here would be the sump hanging off the bottom, and then the, the block sort of bolts on, because the engine in this car is like slanted over. So I hold it up this way, we've got the sump here at the bottom of the car, and then the pistons and everything all face out at this like 45 degree angle. So this is, I'll call it the crank girdle, that sort of makes the most sense as a description. And in the bottom of the box I have a mystery spring, mystery bracket, and a mystery bolt. So I'm not too worried about those because I don't know what they are. Almost done, I forgot I had this little box wrapped in bubble wrap. Oh, it's a, it's another paper oil filter, so that's not, well, I thought it would be something cooler than that, but it's not. <laughs> So just out of interest, I went through all the boxes and found all the boot locks, burn bonnet latches, door locks, ignitions. This key opens none of them. <laughs> so that's it for tonight's video. If you have any idea what any of those parts are, let me know. This key, I just remembered that I had a ignition, a steering lock, and a glove box lock in the car. This doesn't open any of those either. So I have no idea what this key is for. I think it's for a lock that I don't have apparently. But yeah, if you liked the video, let me know. That was the last box to go through, so I'm glad I've got all that stuff written down. I know what I have now, and it's cool looking through all those old bits and pieces. But the car also has a bunch of parts in it, and I have a bunch of other bits on the frame over there to go through. So that'll be another video in the future, not straight away, but when I get to it. But yeah, hope you liked the video. Let me know if you recognise any of the bits and pieces, and you can let me know what they are. I don't have to do with this key, I guess I'll just keep it, because it doesn't fit anything. But yeah, see everybody in the next video, and have a good night. Goodbye.